I was hearing constantly in the media this complaint. Oh, these people, they don't know what they're doing. They don't have any concrete ideas. They're just a bunch of hippie kids and like, where are their ideas? And um, I had a sense, because I'm kind of like an independent media watchdog, if you will, <laughs> but I had a sense that um, I had a strong suspicion that these were false claims, you know? So I kind of threw a sign together just really quickly and it said concrete ideas. And I made a list of them. Repealing Bush tax cuts, stopping the revolving door, um, rebuilding our infrastructure, you know, cutting military spending, simple things off the top of my head. And I went out there and I got such a great response, you know. I had some people come up to me and they're like, oh, that's so great, you should add such and such to the sign. Uh, the problem with the signs is um, they actually take a surprisingly long time to make. <laughs> I like to make them clean and easy to read. <laughs> but I actually spent a surprisingly ridiculous amount of money on like white poster board and like various materials. <laughs> so, so I'm creating jobs. Who says OWS isn't creating jobs? Yeah. So kind of on a whim, I started a Twitter account called Occupy Ideas. And I started to encourage people to tweet their concrete ideas under the hashtag concrete ideas, one word. Um, and it like took off. I, I did have this boy stand in front of my sign and he was like, oh, this is great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet my idea right now. It was amazing. You know what I love about Zuccotti? You know, in the age of enlightenment, they had those little salons. They were really important to the ideas at that time. Well, I kind of feel like Zuccotti is a 21st century enlightenment salon. And then you know, another thing that my eyes have sort of opened up to since getting involved is um, police tactics. Um, you know, I had read news articles about stop and frisk and you know racial profiling in the police department, but I never gave it enough thought. Um, not being in those groups. I, I think I sometimes get misidentified as being Hispanic, but I don't think I ever really get like pegged as. So now that I've had my own experiences with the police department, <laughs> I mean, I was never really arrested or anything, but I have seen the riot gear come out. I was shoved once by a police officer at the Times Square rally completely unnecessarily. I was just standing there holding a sign and then he shoved me and I was like, all right. Well, they didn't want us standing out on the sidewalk, which was, as far as I knew, not breaking any laws. When we marched Times Square, there were so many of us that they were directing us out into the street, right? And then 15 to 20 minutes later, they're like, you gotta get out of the street. And uh, they had closed off the, the back of the end of the street, so there was no way out, basically. And there were thousands of thousands of people crammed into this little space, which, which was, you know, their doing, partially. And it was like, there's nowhere to go. And then they brought their horses out, and they were like riding their horses into people. It was terrifying. It was so frightening. It was so frightening. I wish I was exaggerating about that. But, I mean, and I felt bad for the horses, too. I mean, they must have been freaked out. <laughs> we were all freaked out. And then some people were crying. So, yeah, to see that up close. And it's interesting, you know, that there's that complaint that the, the occupiers aren't very diverse, that they're white people only young white people. And, and I don't think it's because the views that we're representing are the views of only white people. I, it's certainly, I mean, look, the people in my neighborhood will most likely have the most to gain from what we're pushing for, and I think they know that. But having spoken to some of the, the people of color that I've met down there, they're kind of like, well, you got shoved by the police. What do you think would have happened to us? And when I tell them, it's like, express my shock about the kinds of things that I've seen, they're like, yeah, welcome to the club. This is our lives every day. 
like I met some people from Brownsville and they're like, yeah, the police stop me constantly for no reason to search me. And they're like, they're constantly giving us crap and it's racist. Um, and we, I have seen that. I, I get that. I would rather be arrested than have those people be arrested because I will most likely receive much better treatment. So I can't really blame them for not wanting to get too involved. But that kind of gives me extra reason to go out there, you know. <laughs>